Uh, I didn't propose to my wife on the first date. And the reason I'm telling you that is because good relationships in life take time. And that's not just good advice for your neighbors and your friends, but also for your investors and the people you do business with as well. So uh, give more than you take from a relationship and be patient and good things can come out of that. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority, and I'm so excited about the guest that we have joining us here on the show today. So, of course, this is the podcast where we talk about raising private money for your real estate deals without ever having to ask for money. Well, let me ask you a question. How would you like to raise private money for your real estate deals and do it automatically? Well, my guest today has already worked with 185 different capital raisers and works with them on how to automate the capital raising. Boy, is this going to be an exciting interview. Well, my guess, he's a speaker, author, entrepreneur. He's a limited partner, real estate investor as well, podcast host. In fact, I was on his show not too long ago. And so we're going to be digging deep as to how to automate your capital raising in just a moment. You're going to meet my friend and guest, Jason Wright, right after this. <music> Well, Jason, welcome to the show. It's great to see you again. Good to see you as well. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. I can't wait to dive in and my audience can't either. They can't wait to hear how in the world do you go about automating the capital raising process? So before you pull back the curtain and reveal the answer to that, um, how did you get into this area? I mean, you know, you're a digital marketing automation expert. Yeah. Um, how, you know, how did you get into this space? Yeah, kind of by accident, to be honest with you. So like you said, uh, marketing automation is my focus and has been my focus for almost nine years. Uh, and once upon a time, I, I did some work um, for a capital raiser, didn't even really understand what that was at the time. And um, a while later, I met Hunter Thompson from Raise Masters as he was getting that going. And uh, had the opportunity to meet more people in this niche. Uh, and at the time there wasn't really much of a, an automated system out there to help with this. So I, I learned the needs of these people and kept meeting more of these people and kind of got into this community and uh, just helped create a solution where, where there wasn't one there. So it's all about building and nurturing and maintaining relationships like any other kind of business. So to be honest with you. Right. So would you say of these 185, capital raisers mm -hmm. that you've worked with, would you say they're raising capital more for commercial projects or are they raising capital for single family homes, self storage, all the above? What kind of asset classes? Yeah, all the above. I'm going to say the most common uh, that you hear about are multifamily, self storage, RV parks. Um, you do have, I'm hearing more about single family here recently, which is interesting. Uh, I've heard almond farms. I've heard, you know, car washes. You can syndicate about anything, hotel conversions. So there, there's all kinds of good stuff. Um, so those are just a few popular examples for sure. Right. All the capital raising that I have done has been in the space. And I started raising capital back in February of 2009. And all the capital raising that I have done personally has been for single family houses. And the type of deals that I do, uh, it's called one-offs. And what a one-off is, for those of you that are listening or watching to the show, a, a one-off is you have a private lender or maybe two or three private lenders that are funding and loaning money on a single family property. They each have their own promissory note, their own deed of trust or mortgage. But that is in contrast or opposed to a fund. So it sounds like 
uh, Jason, most of your capital raisers that you work with, and it doesn't matter, it's all the same money. Yeah. Um, yeah, most of them have been raising money for their syndication and for their funds, right? Yeah, it was all, all you heard about two or three years ago, uh, at least the people I worked with was syndications, but it's been a lot more common for people to use, you know, whether it's um, SPV funds or fund to fund models. So you hear both, but like you say, it's really the same in that it's, again, building, maintaining and, uh, you know, kind of improving those relationships with uh, your contacts, your investors. Yeah. Well, with all those capital raisers you've worked with, um, what's on the low end as far as the amount of money or funding they were looking to raise and they used your automation process yeah. um, to the top end? Like, you know, what's the, the high end that they've done? Yeah, I mean, I think the low end for people is, you know, probably somewhere in the range of half a million dollars uh, as far as a year, what their goals are. And, you know, a lot of these people may be, you know, surgeons or lawyers or entrepreneurs for a main hustle. And they might do this kind of on the side. And then, you know, other people that have bigger audiences, bigger lists, uh, access to more deals, you know, may do tens of millions of dollars a year. So it varies quite a bit. Um, there is a lot of, uh, you know, one man and one woman shops out there trying to raise money. Uh, a lot of them got into the space passively at first, um, you know, took an interest in trying to become a, you know, a partner or a, um, a GP. And uh, they're trying to raise money for deals because everybody gets tired of or runs out of their own money for stuff like this eventually. So, oh, sure, sure. And when they're raising money and capital, they, they run out of their own, what I call warm market, their own yeah. connections. They go through their own network. And, and so I teach uh, as well to my community, how to grow that network very, very quickly. Um, but let's get into, you know, what you're doing with all these capital raisers. So let's walk through the process. Um, my, my first question is where are these people? <laughs> <laughs> in other words, where not not where are the capital raisers? Where are the uh, where are the people? Where's the audience that is attracted into your marketing funnel to become in, to become uh, private lenders or investors? So, are you asking where the market is for the limited partners or the people that are my clients? So the the limit the limited partners. In other words, we yeah. would call them in the single family house. They're private lenders. They're people that have money that yeah. want to be passive investors. They don't want to, you know, run the show. They just want to sit back and get nice rates of return, you know, safely and securely. Yeah. So, you know, if you look at social media as an example, I think anybody that any of us want to work with in that regard is on LinkedIn. So I think LinkedIn's key. Uh, people do uh, people do a good job growing those audiences off of kind of all the major social platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, maybe even X as well. But LinkedIn is definitely key. Um, some people have surprisingly large networks of people um, that are accredited investors. And even if you don't need to be accredited, they've got good networks. You know, if somebody is a, you know, a plastic surgeon, as an example, their, their network, they've got an advantage over somebody like me that, you know, doesn't have a network, uh, personal network, with, you know, a lot of people with money, a lot of my clients, but uh, not before I got into that per se. So I think a lot of it's, you know, organic relationships. And then beyond that, if you look at social, uh, LinkedIn is definitely king for sure. So does your automation process for helping a capital raiser raise money, yeah. does your process um, rely on uh, predominantly social networks and people that are on social? Yeah, great question. So we're really focused on what I would call the back end of the funnel. So what happens after people join your email list? We'll help you with strategy and things like that as far as traffic or getting in front of, uh, you know, cold audiences, could be online, could be an in-person events, et cetera. But once people join your list, that's really what we focus on where that takes place. To be honest with you, there's no better traffic source, and you probably know this, um, uh, than in person, right? If you're at an event and you happen to host that event, it doesn't get any better than that. So that's really good, but it's not scalable. It's not scalable like online is. So we really help take advantage uh, of that new relationship once they get into your email list. So we call it okay. The well, let's th let's start there. Let's let's assume that 
Um, we already know how to get somebody on our list, right? Yeah. How to grow our list. So now they're on the, when we say list, you're talking about the email list, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So would you say most of the marketing funnel that you, that you provide or show is email copy that's written or, well, let me let you, let me let you just walk through it. So yeah. let's assume I've got my list. Okay. I've got my email list. Now I want you to work with me on, on talking to my list. What yep. does that look, what does that look like? Yep. So I'll back up a little bit, but I'll answer that question. So what we help people do is get more people onto your list. So if you, a, a normal capital raising website that's going to have, you know, an invest now form for people that are ready to go, might have a couple of lead magnets like eBooks, due diligence, checklists, et cetera, value-based stuff. Uh, may have contact form, newsletter form, stuff like that. We're going to help flow all those different paths into a pipeline focused on new investors. And, you know, with any new relationship that we care about in life, we want to start talking to them right away and, and leading with value. So we're going to run them into an automation, kind of introduce people to you. You share your background, your wins, kind of why you do what you do. But we're not talking about investing yet, right? It's the dating phase, if you will. Uh, from there, we're going to flow them into another automation automatically, give them more education on what you're doing, why you're doing it, that type of thing. And then there is a call to action in that automation finally to book a call. So we're going to basically take the customer journey from a brand new person into your list and uh, try to nurture each piece of that process. And those are just a few examples. Is all the communication with the people on your, you know, prospective lenders, prospective yeah. lenders, is everybody on the list, is all the communication written copy or is some of the communication uh, video? Yeah, I, that's a great question. So the foundation, the most basic approach is written copy, but I utilize video, text, ringless voice. I utilize a variety of things for, for our business personally, just kind of depending on where people are at. Um, if you've got a an audience um, like you do or you've got your own you know podcast and your own show, uh, you know, as well as I do, if you get people on your list, you want to encourage them to engage with you everywhere you are. And the beauty there is the email list um, that kind of goes into your CRM so you can kind of see where everybody's at is just the beginning. And you really want all of your marketing efforts to be uh, helpful, educational and part of that nurturing process. So uh, you can just do copy if you want to. But there's there's a lot of other great options uh, like I've discussed video, get them into your podcast audience, et cetera. That makes sense. So they come on the list. Now we're going to start marketing to them. Do you and your team, uh, when you're working with a capital raiser, do you write the emails? Do you write the copy? So what we do is, uh, it used to just be, it used to be me. And we would tell people to, you know, modify the copy. And then this year we actually added another layer to that. Uh, we have you fill out a form to get your style, who you're targeting, these different questions answered. We take my style, we take your input, we run it through AI. So everybody gets their own email copy, subject lines. And then you still may tweak a bit, but everybody's copy is unique that way. Okay, well, that's good. So if I've got a friend or a competitor that's yeah. also raising money and we happen to have some of the same folks on our, our, on our list, Yep. They're not going to be getting the same emails. No. And it's really interesting because uh, people have so many people have such different styles as far as how they want their stuff to sound. And it can change it quite a bit. Like me, it doesn't matter if we have lunch today. We're talking now. I'm always the same everywhere. I would describe my style as unapologetically authentic. And that resonates with people. Right. Mm -hmm. They know who they're dealing with. It's very polarizing. It either attracts them or repels them. And that's the point. So. Uh, we encourage people to, to answer that form, honestly, and it, it does create a very different experience from the, the consumer standpoint. Yep. Yeah, that makes uh, that makes sense. And that's, and that's very, very smart. How much time goes by? How many emails? How much time, generally speaking, from the time they get the very first email yeah. until uh, the email is asking the reader to schedule a phone call? Um, let's go off to top of my head, probably around a week, something like that. Okay. Uh, and here's, here's the beauty about it. Since I built it all from scratch, so we built it in either active campaign 
or another program called Go High Level. The market mm -hmm. kind of demanded high level, so we do it in either one. Yeah, I How actually use Go High Level in my business. Okay, there you go. So we give people a great foundation. And what I remind them of is, hey, since I build this, any little piece of this can be modified. You mm -hmm. might want to do this piece longer. Just tell me and we'll we'll make it longer. So it's a really nice, clean, moldable ball of clay is how I describe it. But, um, you know, once people start getting nurtured to book a call, let's say they don't do that, which is fine. They're going to end up on your main list anyway. And that's why it's so important to be sending out at least two newsletters a month. They're going to forget what you said, but they're going to remember they heard from you. That brand awareness piece mm -hmm. is more important than ever because every one of us get inundated with marketing stuff in every facet of our life every day. So yes. I preach touch points over content because people are going to forget what you said because it's impossible to retain everything. But they'll mm -hmm. remember they heard from you. So. All right. So are they getting an e when they, when they were first come on the list, are they getting an email like every day? Um, the first couple of days. And again, we're not selling anything. We're not telling the book a call. We're just sharing our story. Uh, we call it a welcome series automation. So I just checked this last week for my business. The one I have now has been running about three years. My open rates for email one, two, and three are in the high seventies. Wow. That's Nobody knows very high very high. Nobody knows they're going to get it, right? Nobody opts into my welcome series, but I play into the my favorite part about humanity and that's curiosity. So I leave open loops at the end of my emails and they're like, what the heck is this guy talking about? And they want to keep going. So it is effective, but uh, there's no trickery or anything like that. I'm just leading with value and telling my story and uh, it gets people interested. Right. Uh, of course, the, the, in my opinion, the, the most important part of an email is to get it opened. Yeah. And then of course, to get it open, the only thing we've really got to work with predominantly is the subject line. Yeah. What advice, what would advice would you give on crafting subject lines that gets the email opened? That's a great question. And there's actually tools out there that you can pop in your subject line and they'll give you a score on how likely it is to be open. I play into negativity. So it might be like, you're not going to believe this epic failure I had in my business recently. Stuff like that where it's real, but it's about me. People sadly love to see that stuff. But again, curiosity is my favorite thing to play into. So <laughs> and uh, in other words, they're up for a little break in their day to yeah. read about somebody else's pain. Yeah, because, you know, as an entrepreneur, um, the bad thing about social media is for many people, it's just a highlight reel, right? And for many people it's highlights that aren't even real. It's a fake highlight reel. So when there is somebody that comes along and is willing to go, Hey, is, have you guys ever experienced this? I'm getting my butt kicked this year. They love it because they're like, I'm not alone. It makes you very real. It's attractive to people. And that's, you know, if you go to the other extreme, why reality TV has such a big audience, people love to see in other people's drama, which is, which is bad. So I'm obviously not saying do that, but I'm saying if you be, if you're real with your failures and your struggles, uh, it's extremely powerful and the open rates show that. That's an amazing statistic, um, Jason, that you're getting almost on average a 70% open rate on the emails. That's just unheard of. So congratulations on that. And of course, your clients are are winning because of that. Speaking of your clients, yeah. Uh, I want to, I want to make sure that no one misses out, uh, that's listening and tuning into this episode on how to get in contact with you. So what is the best way uh, for someone to contact you to learn more about your, uh, capital raising funnels and, and working with you and all that kind of good stuff? Yeah. So the main website is intentionally inspirational.com. Uh, we do have a free 10 minute training for capital raisers to kind of go just a bit deeper in what we've talked about today. You can check that out at capitalraisingautomations.com. Check that out. Worst case scenario, you'll walk away from it with some fresh perspectives that you can take action on and um, recognize in your own business immediately. I love that URL, www.capitalraisingautomations.com. And you say that's a uh, that's a video training, right? Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a ten minute video training they can opt in and check out there and, and get a little bit more info about what we're talking about today. Okay, excellent. So that's capitalraisingautomations.com. 
Your other URL is www.intentionallyinspirational.com. Now, what's that URL about, intentionallyinspirational.com? So that's the name of our business. That's our home base where you can see uh, not only the other one, but everything else we're into. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about, in addition to working with capital raisers, what other types of marketing funnels do you create? Yeah. So we do, uh, we do lead gen, we call it a kind of a full stack marketing for companies as well that need that. So Facebook ads, we can build the the landing pages for funnels and of course the whole backend as well. Uh, what I've been telling people recently is if you have a business and you have leads that need to be nurtured, we should probably have a conversation. So our skill set is universal, uh, well beyond the capital rate raising niche for sure. But those are some of the things we're, we're doing. Wonderful. What are some of the mistakes that you've seen, um, people do them? I mean, you've worked with a long list of clients, yeah. but in, in, in the, in the space of raising capital, what kind of mistakes have you seen operators make? Yeah. So one is not setting up some kind of a CRM and marketing automation. doesn't matter if it's with me or anything. One is, uh, people are trying to build their business with, legal pads and post-it notes uh, still on rotary phones, which doesn't seem (laughs) real scalable. The other thing is um, people, when they're new with capital raising, um, they go into it trying to sell, Mm. right? You're trying to sell $1,500, $100,000 investment opportunities for strangers. And it's like, I'm a passive investor. Like I want to sit down and have a meal with you and a cigar and a, a bourbon and figure out who I'm really dealing with face to face. But if I don't know you, I'm not going to invest 50 grand in your great deal under any circumstance. So their mm-hmm. approach is wrong. They're looking to sell instead of looking to build relationships. Um, you know, a lot of people don't invest in their own deals and I understand that they can't, but it's a difficult pitch. If somebody's like, well, have you, have you put money into this as well? And you're like, no, I haven't. That, ooh, God. So, I think they go into it with the wrong uh, mindset. And the final mistake that I see is a lot of people get into this thinking it's a get rich quick opportunity for them. And Mm -hmm. if you talk to anybody who's been doing it a long time, when they get started, they generally have an existing full-time business or an existing corporate job that pays well. Um, Asset or uh, acquisition fees are not going to make you rich unless you're raising a huge amount of money. So, and obviously the big money's on the exits and the refis and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that you brought up the point that this space of raising capital is not about selling. In fact, I say it all the time. Uh, In in fact, I don't even ask my private lenders for money. I don't even pitch deals. And of course I have a method of going about that of where I don't even pitch the deal. The, the, The secret sauce to that is I separate conversations of my private lending program and what's the program look like and how they can earn higher rates of return safely and securely without having any kind of a deal for them to invest in. I mean, there's no need to talk about a deal unless they like and trust me and like the program, regardless of the deal. And, and, you know, when I was on your show, I probably put on my teacher hat, (laughs) which says private money teacher And I tell people all the time, this is all about leading with a servant's heart. It's about educating. It's about giving value. And there's no selling, begging, you know, trying to persuade, trying to talk anybody in anything. In fact, when I am talking with someone, I have this picture in my mind of I've really got one foot uh, out the door, ready to walk backwards and walk out. And anytime that I feel like I'm actually selling or actually pushing, I pull back because that's not, that's not what this is about. Yep. I like it. Another another important point you made is that this is not about raising money overnight. You know, we've got four, I've got 47 private lenders right now that are investing in our deals, funding our deals and Of those 47 private lenders, not one of them had ever heard of private money or private lending. None of them had ever heard of it. They're regular people. They are retired school teachers. They're from every walk of life, civil service, et cetera. Not one of them even knows, no reason for me to talk to them about it. They don't even know what an accredited investor is. These are just regular people, you know. 
And so again, it's about the relationships. And so when I say it's not an overnight thing is first of all, if it's a new relationship, you got to nurture the relationship and have the, yeah. the relationship established before you even bring up, you know, those specific topics. And, you know, one part of my automation process is I've got a 16 minute audio that I share with people that just even introduces what, what is private money and what is being a private lender it just introduces. Well, when I first started sharing that 16 minute audio all the way back in 2009, it still works today. When I first started sharing that audio with potential private lenders, it might be six months. It might be a year. It might be three years yeah. before they are actually in a position or ready to do something, but then it might be in less than a month. So it's just like, it's just all over the place as far as how quickly, you know, people take action and, and actually, you know, come on, come on board with you. Yep. So, um, anyway, this, I'm so glad that, uh, first of all, you had me on your show, by the way, tell our audience about your show. Yeah. So I have a podcast as well called Real Estate Investor Marketing Stories. And it's talking to great guests like Jay and, and kind of learning a bit about their path into real estate investing. And, you know, uh, we get into a little bit of the entrepreneurial piece, but a little bit into the marketing piece, kind of what's worked, what their biggest mistakes have been, things like that as well. So just something a little bit different uh, to check out for sure. Yes. Well, it was uh, it was great being on your show. You're a fantastic podcast host and interviewer. And so I'm going to give out the websites one more time, and then I'll let you have the final word, Jason. So uh, Jason's URLs are intentionallyinspirational.com, intentionallyinspirational.com. And then specifically for raising capital for your real estate deals, it's capitalraisingautomations.com. Uh, okay. Final word or any other advice you'd like to share, Jason, before we wrap it up? Yeah, I'll just send uh, everybody off watching and listening with a piece of advice. Uh, just remember, you know, I'm married. I've been married actually 19 years today. Um, I didn't. Congratulations. Propose, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I didn't propose to my wife on the first date. And the reason I'm telling you that is because good relationships in life take time. And that's not just good advice for your neighbors and your friends, but also for your investors and the people you do business with as well. So, uh, give more than you take from a relationship and be patient and good things can come out of that. Wonderful advice. Jason, thank you so much for taking the time to join me on the show. No problem. Thanks for having me. You got it. There you have it. Another amazing episode of raising private money. I'm so glad you decided to join us and I'll be looking forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of raising private money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.